Hello, my name is David Jones. I am a, a youth coach within the UK, national youth coach within the UK. I race RS 400s, I've raced them within the UK and internationally as well. In this video, I'm going to try and explain the use of the WATSAC on trapezoidal and Olympic courses and how they can help us, how the WATSAC can help us determine what courses to steer after each mark. Okay, let me start. The first thing, the important thing with the WATSAC is to dial in the wind direction bearing. Um, and from a previous video we did of what tack start line bias, I explain in detail how I did that in that video. But for now, we know the wind direction is 360, so we'll dial 360 here. There we are, 360, pointers pointing on 360 as well. Okay, let's start with the trapezoidal course. We know that trapezoid courses have the marks laid out at 60 degrees to one another. So, um, before the start, what we need to do is, we know that this leg will be on starboard from mark 1 to mark 2. So at 60 degrees, we have a 60 degree line drawn on our WATTAC here. And that 60 degree line runs through, after I've dialed the wind, runs through the, uh, the dial on that, runs through 240 on there. So we know if we steer the boat at 240, we will get to the next mark. And this is important because if the marks are far, far apart and we can't see the next mark of the course, we could be steering and sailing extra distance to get there. Or if we're having a luffing battle with other racers, you know, we, we might not know where this next mark is. So it's important to know which angle to steer to that next mark. So we know on starboard, uh, it's going to be 240 because it tells me on here, the 60 degree line. We know the run, so between marks 2 and, and 3, if we look on here, we've got the line running down, and that line runs through 180 degrees. So we know that that's the, the course to steer from marks 2 to marks 3. Now, this, this course here, from marks 3 to marks 4, will be on port tack, with the wind in this direction. So if we get our watt tack and run our finger along the 60 degree line, we can see that that passes through 120. So that course there to steer is 120 degrees, and that'll take us right to to marks four. Okay, if we move over to the Olympic triangle, um, again, it's important that we've dialed the wind direction into our watt tack. We're going to leave it on 360 or zero degrees. Now, before the start, we know that the uh, Olympic triangle is at, the marks are at 45 degrees, windward and, and leeward mark. So we know that if we do the, the, the beats and then we come along the top reach here to the jive mark, if we look at, if we're going to be on starboard tack, so on starboard tack, we look, we follow, we've got a 45 degree line here drawn on our watt tack, and we run our finger along the line and we can see that that passes through 225 degrees on the dial. So we know that that's the course to steer between marks one and marks two of that Olympic triangle. Again, it's important that we know this because if the marks are, are spread out a long way apart, we're not sailing extra distance trying to get there. Or if we're having a luffing battle with some other boats, we know which course to sail straight after that battle. Okay, once we do the jive mark, we'll be sailing on port tack. So we move to the port section of the watt tack. And then 45 degrees, the line drawn on there runs through 135 degrees on our dial. So we know if we steer 135 degrees, we get to the leeward mark. So the watt tack is very, very efficient in that respect. Again, I can't stress the importance of writing these figures down on the boat with a China graph pen before the start of the race. We have three other videos. We have the watt tack start line bias, the watt tack windward leeward video, and the watt tack sail combinations for keelboats. I hope you can watch them videos. Thanks for watching this one.